Welcome to the Ethical AI mini-series on GovCast. This series features federal AI leaders across civilian and defense agencies discussing the latest developments in artificial intelligence and how they're working to ensure these technologies are fair, transparent, and secure. With me today is senior researcher Sarah Seibert. Sarah, you had a chance to chat with Elham Tabasi, Chief of Staff, Information Technology Laboratory at NIST. How'd it go? Yeah, it was a great conversation. Um, Elham was really busy, so we caught her on the go, but I'm excited for you all to learn more about the AI risk management framework. Yeah, definitely. So at the beginning of the year, NIST released its AI risk management framework, or AI RMF. What was the impetus for its development? Yeah, so NIST has a large portfolio of research and a long-standing history of cultivating trust in technology. So the agency develops frameworks and standards to make technology more secure and reliable, driving trustworthiness, which is critical when it comes to AI. So the massive growth in AI we've seen over the years has made securing and validating it even more critical. Tabasi will explain that AI presents both huge potential as well as risks. So NIST is taking a creative and thoughtful approach to risk management. From this approach, NIST birthed the AI RMF in January 2023. AI RMF is a voluntary framework with a goal to help to develop and deploy AI in ways that enable organizations, uh, United States and other nations to enhance AI trustworthiness uh, while managing risks based on the democratic values. It should help to accelerate AI innovation and growth while advancing rather than just restricting or damaging uh, rights. Uh, in AI RMF, it provides a, um, a structured, flexible, measurable way to address uh, traditional measures of uh, accuracy, validity, and reliability, but also more importantly, it, it provides and outlines processes to uh, address uh, socio-technical uh, risks such as uh, security, safety, privacy, and bias. Wow. So only two months into the AI RMF, a very exciting time. So what are the characteristics of a trustworthy AI system? Yeah, so basically trustworthy AI means testing and measuring results to ensure that AI or algorithms aren't biased and deliver accurate results. This is a somewhat simple explanation for something that's actually really difficult and complex. Measuring the trustworthiness of AI includes everything from assessing privacy, explainability, equity, transparency, and more to limit the risk factors of AI, although Tabasi notes that there's no risk-free AI. I think this is something we hear a lot in tech. Cybersecurity is another one, like when you get in a car, you're assuming risk. It's the same thing when you're working with technology. So the AI RMF really focuses on managing that inherent risk. The discussions about what makes an AI system uh, trustworthy and responsible uh, is ongoing uh, through the development of the AI RMF uh, NIST uh, through the uh, open transparent collaborative process that it launched. Uh, we, uh, we agreed with the community. The community agreed on uh, trustworthy AI include uh, valid and reliable, uh, secure and resilient, safe, privacy enhanced, interpretable and explainable, transparent and accountable, and uh, uh, the harmful bias is managed. Um, the AI RMF also provides some sort of a description around these uh, seven components uh, and through the four functions of map, measure, manage, and govern, uh, tries to uh, provide guidance on how to uh, identify these type of uh, characteristics within the context of use, uh, how to measure them, and uh, based on uh, the information from the map and measure, come up with uh, 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 processes and mechanisms to manage those risks. So obviously, AI is important to the whole of government at this point, but who should be involved in AI governance more directly? 
So NIST's AI RMF actually has a dedicated section to AI governance, which covers the roles and responsibilities, processes, and mechanisms for effective risk management. Tabasi explains that the AI RMF essentially breaks down responsibilities for various stages of AI development, from design to senior leadership, because not all stakeholders have the same roles in design development and implementation. So governance and outlining those specific functions should be tailored accordingly. Risk management is not just a responsibility of only developer or deployer, but it's a shared responsibility across the life cycle. In terms of the governance and accountability, uh, ARRMF also talks about the importance of um, the highest level uh, leadership and executive um, portion of the organizations take the responsibility for AI risk management. So why is collaboration critical for effective AI governance? Tabasi explains that AI is all about context or how it'll be used in the real world and how that affects risk levels and then how that trustworthiness should be measured as a result. So the AI RMF was created to understand the context and outcomes of these different scenarios. And because AI is so multidisciplinary, NIST conducted engagement and outreach to a broad set of expertise from legal scholars to philosophers, psychologists, and more to understand the impact of AI systems. During the different stages of AI life cycle, through the design, development, deployment, and uh, regularly monitoring of the systems, it's really important to reach to a very broad um, sets of expertise uh, the people that they design, so the tech, tech community, but also, um, as I said, uh, so psychologists, sociologists, cognitive scientists, uh, uh, to be able to help us understand the impact of the system. How does the framework build upon existing documents for AI governance and risk management? I know we've had at least one episode dedicated just to this in the past. Yeah, so Tabasi says that throughout the development of the AI RMF, NIST's goal was to avoid duplication with existing AI guidance. She noted that there are tailored documents that help organizations focus on specific subsets for AI, like AI and cybersecurity, for example. So the AI RMF isn't trying to duplicate or reinvent the wheel of some of these existing documents, but instead back these current standards and sort of outline those functions that I mentioned earlier. In the development of the AI risk management framework, uh, one of the criteria that we put for ourselves was uh, make sure that we leverage all the good works that has been done and uh, build on top of that uh, and certainly avoid any contradiction or duplication. Moving forward, NIST plans to continuously assess the AI risk management framework and build upon it to stay up to speed with the pace of AI's evolution. There are uh, AI systems in here. They are, you know, um, software systems, information systems, data systems, but uh, they also present some unique risks that are not captured in uh, other frameworks, for example, for cybersecurity and privacy. In AI RMF, we have an appendix that talks about how AI risks can differ from other systems. And in development of the AI RMF, we try to answer specifically those. Uh, risks unique to AI systems. For any other type of risks, uh, other uh, good standards and frameworks, um, we leverage them and we reference them. Uh, at the same time, we also provide uh, crosswalks between the AI RMF and some other documents, uh, other standard documents uh, developed through the ISO or some of the high level policy documents uh, to, uh, in a way, provide. Uh, a semantic alignment between all these documents. Uh, and we think that's a really important to understand uh, uh, that alignment and build on uh, based on those alignments. And we will uh, plan to continue building more crosswalks between AI RMF and more standards and other documents. You will see that on our uh, roadmap. In terms of the update, uh, AI technology being a very rapidly evolving technology, uh, we already put it in our RMF that we have a uh, revision cycle or review cycle of every three to five years. Uh, so, and in development of AI RMF, we were very cognizant to make sure that the uh, document is uh, developed in a in a way that's uh, 
flexible, flexible to allow innovations, but also allow different uh, um, organizations of different size be able to adopt this. Uh, by purpose, it is a sector and technology uh, agnostic and, of course, law and regulation agnostic since we are non-regulatory. But we also understood that uh, uh, you, we need to uh, provide more descriptions uh, for the people that want to uh, the, adopt the AI RNF. So we put out a playbook, a companion document playbook, uh, that provides more uh, descriptions and uh, helpful resources on implementations of the different guidance in the, in the AI RNF. Uh, the playbook uh, is planned to be updated every six months uh, to allow us to keep uh, uh, up with the uh, very rapid pace of uh, changes and innovations in the community. So AI RMF being updated every three to five years and the playbook every six months. So I know the AI RMF has only been around for two months at this point, but what's next? Tabasi says that in terms of next steps, NIST wants to operationalize the AI RMF. So this means spreading the word, taking it to the community and showing them how to use it. She emphasizes adoption and education. Another activity that uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time uh, in the near future on is development of AI RMF profile. Uh, so AI RMF, as I said, is a, uh, a sector and technology agnostic uh, uh, document. Um, at the same time, uh, as I said, AI is all about uh, context. Uh, so in order to do risk management for a specific context, for example, hiring, uh, risk management of AI systems being used for you know, me medical, uh, di medical um, image diagnostics, that, those, those, those verticals uh, or those tailored uh, set of guidance uh, from AI RMF uh, document into a specific uh, sector, uh, we call them AI RMF profile. So we are, uh, we have the call for contributions, we have a call for invitations for the whole community for development of the AI RMF profiles, uh, which are instantiations of AI RMF uh, uh, document or um, uh, tailored set of guidance in AI RMF for a particular use case for a particular uh, sector and examples are again as i said uh, hiring healthcare or other uh, other areas so these are the things that are uh, um, top on the list of the roadmap uh, and activities for us to do in the coming months thank you sarah i'm so glad that you got to catch elham while on the go Listeners can look out for another episode in our Ethical AI mini-series at the end of April. But until then, that's all for today's episode. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice. And hey, even tell a friend if you want to. We'll be back with another GovCast interview in two weeks. But until then, I'm Alexander Bolova. I'm Sarah Seibert. Thank you for listening. GovCast, along with HealthCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them on your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com.